So when we think of penguins, we think of cold, snow, and the South Pole. In fact, there are no penguins at the South Pole, and most penguins never venture to Antarctica. There are about 19 species of penguins. All but four of them live north of Antarctica, in South Africa, South America, and the sub-Antarctic islands scattered around the Southern Hemisphere. Of the four penguins that live in Antarctica, three of them, the Delhi, the Chinstrap, and the Gentoo, breed only during the Antarctic summer. Only the largest of the penguins, the emperor penguin, breeds during the extreme Antarctic winter and stays down on Antarctica through the winter. Every year in the fall, the ice around Antarctica expands and moves the ice edge 100 miles or more north. With the advancing ice edge goes access to the sea and food. So in the middle of the winter, all that is left in Antarctica is snow, ice, and emperor penguins. So we decided to set out on an adventure to see these largest and most remote of all the penguins. Our adventure to Antarctica begins in Ushuaia, at the southern tip of South America. In our case, in order to get to the Emperor Penguin Colony, we need to take a Russian icebreaker, the Kapitan Kalivnikov. Certainly part of the thrill of going to see the Emperor Penguins is the dramatic trip to the colony. We will have to cross the Drake Passage to get to Antarctica, then potentially break through miles of ice. This can be especially rough in a rounded hole icebreaker with no stabilizer. We were rolling enough to be uncomfortable, but the seas were much calmer than usual so it is not bad enough to disrupt our briefings on the Emperor Penguins. We started in Ushaya. It took us about a day and a half to cross the Drake Passage. We are now approaching the Antarctic Peninsula and we are going to go through the Antarctic Strait on our way down to Snow Hill. It is the afternoon of the third day. We are arriving at the Antarctic Peninsula and starting crossing through the Antarctic Strait to the Weddell Sea on the other side of the peninsula. The strait is also called Iceberg Alley because of all the icebergs that can usually be found here. There are two types of ice, sea ice and shelf ice. Shelf ice is the ice that originated on land-based ice flows and broke off and floated free. These large flat top icebergs are from shelf ice. They can be a mile long and 100 feet high. As we head further south, we are starting to run into sea ice. First, the ice just appears as sort of a gloss shine to the water. Later, we will run into pan ice, where the ice has frozen into these spots that sort of look like lily pads or cookies. Heading further south, we now have encountered hard sea ice, and we will continue breaking our way through it as far as we can go. When the ice gets so thick that the ship can't push through it, they drive the ship up on the ice, and the sheer weight of the ship crushes the ice. Sometimes this takes a couple of tries. Okay, it's not really that fast. The ice has gotten thick enough that the captain has decided to park our ship here. Parking just consists of driving the ship up on the ice.
Although the ship is parked, we're still about 12 miles from the Emperor Colony. We will fly in the next 10 miles. Here we are at the Antarctic. We're here to see the Emperor Penguins. This is Snow Hill. It's on the peninsula. It's the closest place that you can find the Emperor Penguins. The Emperor Penguins are in small colonies, about 45 spread around the Antarctic. This is a real opportunity. The Emperor Penguins, the largest of the penguins, is hard to find and is much, much harder to get to than most of the other penguins. These penguins are returning from feeding and will walk to the colony. The ship has two helicopters that will take us to within two miles of the colony. We are now flying over what is mostly frozen sea ice. Off to the right is the island of Snow Hill. The big blocks of ice below us are shelf ice that has broken off the land flows. From the landing point, we are carrying our gear the last two miles to the colony. We are walking over sea ice. That means that we are not walking over snow-covered land, but rather the sea with a layer of ice on top. Since the ice moves, cracks form and we have to watch out that we don't fall through the ice. The crew has marked a safe path with flags, and just in case, we are wearing life jackets. Follow the flags, follow the flags, follow the, follow the, follow the flags. Julie has found a Weddell seal on the ice. It looks like it came up through the gap created by the crack in the ice. These penguins are walking the 12 miles from the water to the colony. Such a long way on such short feet. Here the penguins have the right of way, so we have to hold up. The penguins seem to be almost more comfortable tobogganing along than walking. We have arrived at the colony, and it looks like there is an official greeter waiting for us. We are next to Snow Hill Island, but the Emperor Penguin Colony is actually located on sea ice. The colony is spread out over about a mile in seven groups. All this ice will be gone by summer, so the chicks must have their adult feathers by then. The penguins show no fear of us. We are not allowed to go closer than 10 feet, but the penguins can come as close as they want. So we set up our cameras and wait. If you wait long enough, they can come quite close. The emperor penguin is the largest of all the penguins. The emperor penguin can be up to 48 inches tall and weigh 80 pounds. Although they are birds, they have lost the ability to fly through the air, but they can fly through the water, diving to depths of 1,700 feet. They rock back on their tails to reduce the heat loss through their feet. They look like they have fur, but actually they have very dense feathers that provides insulation and waterproofing.
The penguins arrive here in the fall. The female lays her eggs in early winter, then leaves to feed. The male incubates the egg in the front pouch above the feet through the very cold Antarctic winter. He then hatches and feeds the chick. By the time the female returns in three or four months, the male will have lost half his body weight. It is still the middle of winter, and the male must return to the sea to feed or die. It can be a journey of 100 miles back to the water at this time. No wonder the emperor penguin is so big to lose half his body weight and survive through the Antarctic winter. The penguins don't have fixed nesting sites, so when one of the penguins returns from feeding, they find each other by a unique call that they use to identify each other. After locating their mate in the colony, the penguins then go through this elaborate greeting. It is now spring, and the early hatching chicks are getting pretty big. The chicks have no real predators as long as they stay together. These little chicks that are on the feet are the ones that hatched later. They're going to have a tough time growing up enough to take to the sea when the ice under the colony melts. Take a look at this chick that is head first into the pouch. parents regurgitate the food that they've caught at sea to feed the chicks. As the chicks get bigger, along with their appetites, they gather in groups called creches. This allows both parents to return to the sea to get food to feed the chicks.
We are heading back to the ship. We will soon be leaving the Emperor Colony and returning up north. We are making our way back through the Weddell Sea, but first we are going to make a couple of stops. We are going to see a couple of other penguin colonies of the three penguins that breed in Antarctica. We spent four days at the Emperor Colony. One was a blizzard, but we were lucky to have two sunny days, so we got some great light. Our first stop is here at Brown's Bluff. These are Delhi penguins, and it is spring. They have just arrived. They like the barren sites that they can use to build their nest with rocks. Through all the competitors and chaos, this male is trying to win stones to the nest that has made his lonely. These penguins only have about four months to breed and fledge their chicks, so they have to get right to it. Also just arriving at the same site are some Gen 2 penguins. They too need to build their nests and mate quickly. Our last stop is here at Half Moon Bay. We are taking shelter here because they have told us there is a cyclone nearby. There is a colony of chinstrap penguins here at Half Moon Bay. Chinstraps also prefer non-icy sites, but these penguins have just arrived and it's probably a little early. Although it's a little early to build nests of rocks, at least until the snow melts, that doesn't stop the mating activities. So we have left Antarctica on our way back to Ushuaia. The cyclone has moved on and the winds are reduced somewhat, but the crew has warned us to expect a rough crossing. Well, as it turns out, the wind and waves are not too bad. The waves look like only about 15 feet and we are averaging about 15 degrees of roll, peaking out about 25 degrees but this from a crew that talks about 45 degree rolls and walking on the walls. Although we are on the sixth floor and still getting a lot of splash. What an opportunity to see these great penguins. While we were there, we had relatively warm sunny days. It's hard to imagine what it must be like living through almost six months of winter at temperatures getting down to minus 78 degrees Fahrenheit with 110 mile winds and worse yet, going without food for two or three months during the winter, then having to walk a hundred miles to the sea to get food. The emperor penguin is truly an amazing creature, having adapted to the harshest environment on Earth.